new additions arrived upon the altars. While the same white glass candles had been lit for the whole season, the family replaced some foods with mole chicken and pipitoria candy, garnished with the seeds of sesame and pipian squash. Unlike in the cities, little to no skull imagery appears on these altars. As an Otomi villager remarked today, the Nahuatl Shantolo has the skull presentations, such as the masquerades in the county of Chicontepec to the north. In Iswatlan, the tradition is more strictly All Saints Day. The mole sauce was cooked from tomato, poblano chili, and other spices. I could listen to music from the indigenous radio and smell the fumes from the hearth's embers in the kitchen behind the dining room. The family had brought the cross from the cemetery for this occasion to return it thereafter. Many of the porches in Cruz Blanca had a small table or platform for the orphaned souls, those who no longer had altars or relatives of their own to receive them. Leading into the house behind this altar is a trail of marigold petals to guide the spirits to the house entrance and altar. As an aside, unlike in the animated movies about the days of the dead, the forgotten or neglected spirits don't vanish. They simply get pissed off and retaliate by haunting and afflicting the living. For one of the region's most important holiday seasons, the festivities were rather low-key. People were tired. The constant altar rearrangements were exhausting. The food preparation was exhausting. The travels and purchases were exhausting. Women were complaining of sore backs and shoulders from making all the tamales. Heavy weather made today rather quiet. Muddy roads, chilling airs, and oppressive rains diminished outdoor activity, even transportation. By night, Cruz Blanca was hauntingly still. I was outside just to search for a Wi-Fi signal. The feasts were over. The living and the dead were all content with ample meals. The former were turning to bed, the latter returning to the beyond. I visited the shaman and a neighbor to learn about local pilgrimages to sacred nature spaces, for which I'd like to return to make new Eye of the Serpent videos.